Okay, so this week is going to be a little bit different. Actually, I'm a bit cold. I Okay, so I'm a bit under the pump this week because I have a lot of packaging work to do. So instead of making the vlog I was going to this week, I'm going to instead share this full 30 minute presentation I did, a talk I did for the Brand Builders Summit that my friend Jacob Cass put on. So I'm gonna share with you here the full 30 minute talk I did on personal branding. The talk was called that's not a personal brand. To kind of maybe talk about some of the misconceptions about personal branding, how you can objectively do it, and what you need to do to make an effective personal brand. So see what you think about this talk. Uh, if it resonated with you, if it didn't resonate with you, leave a comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Otherwise, I will let you uh, enjoy. Here we go. People are not interested in you. They are not interested in me. They are interested in themselves, morning, noon, and after dinner. Now, I'm not that prophetic to have come up with that. That comes from Dale Carnegie, the guy who wrote the book on how to win friends and influence people. So with that quote in mind, let's talk about personal branding. Now, others might have already covered this during the Brand Builders Summit, but I want to get down to the guts of this thing we call personal branding and give you four actionable takeaways for you to go out and make your personal brand. Sound good? All right. So in the spirit of things, we're building brands. I'm here in my kit and caboodle to help build some brands. So let's clear up first what some possible misconceptions might be about what a personal brand is. First up, your personal brand is not about getting personal. The hint isn't in the name because there is such a thing as too much information. So getting personal with your audience is not a prerequisite. It's nice, but you don't need to share everything, only what your audience needs or wants to hear and see. Next is that your personal brand is not about showing up authentically. Otherwise the Kardashians, well, let's just say they would have natural bodies if this were true. So authenticity is not a prerequisite because you can put on a persona rather than showing up as who you are inherently. The choice though is yours. Your personal brand is not about looking the same with the same clothing, the same haircut, accessories. And as much as I love pink and these distinctive assets are of benefit to you, it's still not a prerequisite for a personal brand. The last point here is that your personal brand is not about showing up everywhere. Every single minute of the day to be noticed on Instagram or TikTok or wherever it is. It's not a prerequisite. In other words, breathe a sigh of relief. You don't need to listen to Gary V saying that you need to make 10 videos a day across five social media platforms. Yes, it might get you noticed far quicker, but you can go with quality over quantity, okay? So it's not all these things we probably think it is or maybe thought it is because yes, once I thought all of this was true, yeah? But what I do know is that your personal brand is worth something, okay? A lot of the people talking at this summit and those you probably follow online with a big social media following know this and they use it to their advantage. So how much is it worth? To give you a very loose ballpark, it's worth more than what it is you are probably charging for the thing it is that you do. And given most of you are building brands, you are brand builders, that means whatever you charge for your branding services right now, your brand, your personal brand is worth far more than that. Might be surprising, yeah? And you might be wondering, look, how, how? How is it worth more than that? Here it is in four, four bullet points. You can write them down if you need to. The first is that your personal brand makes it easy for people to discover you. Your personal brand then makes it easy for people to remember you. Your personal brand also makes it easy for people to think of you. And your personal brand makes it easy for people to choose you over others. And look, a bonus, if you run your own business, you run your own branding business like I do, your personal brand gives your client the confidence in you to be happy to pay for what it is you charge. Probably without question, hopefully. Not bad, huh? And yes, I see this day to day, it works. However, however, we are still, still here talking about you. Personal branding is not about you, it is about them, okay? A personal brand is about making it easier for the person you want to discover you, remember you, think of you and choose you over others. 
because they have lots of options out there. We want people to think about you. And this perhaps is what I think many people overlook about branding in general and how to do it. And maybe it's because we are human and we like overcomplicating things, especially branding it seems. We can never really define what brand a brand is and branding and all the rest of it. And all we do like to focus on is ourselves. You know, that's okay, we're human. But we need to realize that our brand is influenced by the people we hope to connect with because it's made for them, for us to then get something in return as a result of it. Because personal branding is not all that different from business branding. And to get there, both need to be kept really, really simple. Because the more we overcomplicate it, the more difficult it becomes for people to discover, remember, think of, and choose you over others, right? So to develop a brand, we need a strategy. Yes, strategy is a hypothetical about how you are going to win. But how do you win? How do you win with your personal brand? You need people. Okay, pens out again if you wanna write this down. Your strategy takes about five, maybe six steps, depending on how you wanna do it. The way I do it here is I start with a thing called market orientation. This is about what need are you feeling? For most of you, it's probably helping your clients do better branding, yes? So there's a need to fill right there, good. The next step is segmentation. Who are all the people that need better branding that you are interested in helping? Big businesses, is it small businesses? Are there coaches that you wanna help? Is it a certain industry or industries? You can go as broad as you want or you can start niche, but broad is a good starting point for segmentation. Because next we go into targeting. And this is where we wanna get specific to define who of these segments is the most viable for you to help, to get their attention, and who can afford your services. Now you don't need to be as niche as targeting, say something like female owned salons in your state that you live in, but somewhat narrow can help you get some focus when starting out, like real estate businesses in your country. All in all, you need to know who you are speaking to so that people know who, if you are speaking to them. Okay, so that's targeting. Positioning next is what you want your brand to be remembered for. It's your intended brand image for that person you want to discover you, remember you, think of you and choose you over others. And by others, you might also want to position against someone or something that you believe is the adversary and stand for something you believe is greater, of greater benefit to your target. We want a statement that guides the direction of this brand so that you win. You put it into something like a purpose or a mission or values in terms of your value proposition or a slogan. Just pick one of these statements that tells the person you want to help, why you? And stick with that message throughout everything that you do to make it easy and simple for everyone. Even if you need to reword it slightly for different contexts, keep the one singular message for your positioning of why you, to remember you. Next is objectives. Now this is one thing that you need to do to make sure that your positioning is working. You can revisit your positioning and say, this isn't working, this isn't working, I need to change my objectives to try and make this positioning work for me. So objectives are here to give yourself a set of goals basically envisage a set of goalposts to score between by writing out one to three objectives that you want to hit to be able to achieve that positioning. Now make sure they're actually doable and put a timeline on it so that you have a deadline to work towards. But these are the steps that just about everyone will be jumping over. People do anything to get to the fun stuff of branding, even though they say they wanna have a brand strategy in place. This is the strategy. That's all your strategy is. It's keep, it's keep it simple. This is what I call a brand strategy. You might call it marketing strategy, you might call it whatever you want. But instead of working backwards to your target audience by creating all the things and then going, okay, well, we need to fit it a square peg into a round hole, you start from them so that everything you do is working towards them, okay? So that's your five steps of strategy. To bring that to life is the fun stuff. It's the tactics, this is step six. This is all the messaging you do, the visuals, your colors, your logos, your clothing, your content, your ads, your events, your merch, your offers, your services, products that you are going to produce to achieve those objectives with that positioning at its core. Now, you might say, 
My personal brand is not about selling anything to people like a business does. Yes, that's, a, that's one other thing to add to the list of what a personal brand is not. Selling something is not a prerequisite of a personal brand. But what I will say is that one at one point or another, most personal brands are going to be offering something. You know, it's one or all of the following things. First thing is your time. The next thing could be your expertise and know-how, your service, your product, or somebody else's product or service. Because to sustain a personal brand over time, most of us need something in return for dishing out the freebies, okay? There is some motive at play. Don't try and hide it. It's okay, you can have a motive, be it for our own benefit, or as a vehicle that drives attention to that thing that you are working on, like a business that you own or that you are a part of. The advantage, however, of a personal brand is that someone is buying into you, okay? Not some faceless brand, corporate brand, and buying into people is far easier because you have the opportunity to give them confidence in you because of who you are, rather than inventing an amalgamated brand that businesses have to, okay? So this means, Getting up the courage to show your face, to share your personality, whether it's amped up a bit or not, that's up to you. Showing what it's like to engage with you by how you engage with your audience or with others while you're on camera or on a podcast, whatever the medium is. And then also showing what you can do and what you know, giving some credibility there. And then showing what you stand for and maybe even stand against strongly, vehemently, it's totally up to you. But most importantly, telling people the what, how, and why of what you can do to help them so that they remember you for that when they need you. Is it to entertain? Is it to support? Is it to educate, to help, or all of the above? Now, to illustrate this point, I always come back to Superman as the easiest example to grasp. Be Superman rather than Clark Kent. Clark Kent's a little boring and we need to capture attention. It's the same person, yeah? But one is showing up 110% for others and might just be the true person that you really are inside that takes the courage for you to show up to people. Superman still has his kryptonite, so he's not perfect and he has his adversities to overcome and stand against. But he has people around him that make him who he is and they act as characters in the brand story. Now you've probably heard of this saying, be the guide, not the hero of your brand story. This was coined by Donald Miller. He's the author of Building a Story Brand. And I bring this up because we all know that Superman is the hero of the story, but it's of the story that we tell about him. If you're Superman, you're not the hero of your own story, okay? You're trying to help others and guide them. And what I've found by that is having this mentality to show up for people at 110% is that there are some tremendous benefits and this is what gets me excited about personal branding because you know what you're here to do each day, which doesn't mean you need to save the world like Superman does necessarily, but you know what you're getting out of bed each day to do. You have clarity. The other thing with benefits here is that you are showing up more over time, no matter the medium, it boosts your confidence immensely as a result and the confidence in your audience and potential clients, not to mention your communication skills go way up in all facets of your life I've found. The other thing is that you start to grow a network of people and not just clients who can add credibility to your personal brand, just the same as a testimonial would for your business. The next point is that more and more opportunities start to present themselves when you put yourself out there and people know who and how you can help. This could be your clients or even others who refer you on to bring you in as a collaborative partner with them. A bit like this Brand Builders Summit. I've known Jacob for a few years. I've had dinner with him. We talk about branding with one another from time to time. And here I am. This is what growth looks like as you build your personal brand. Okay? But what have I missed? Have I missed something? Yes. We've covered your strategy, your message, showing up, the network of people around you. But what about the vanity stuff? Yeah? And you know what I'm talking about here, the superficial facade that a lot of us put on when we think of a personal brand. This is what most people focus on. And don't get me wrong, I play up to this big time if it's not obvious already. This is your colors, your appearance, your clothing, your accessories, your space around you, your voice, 
and maybe even a logo or music that you show up with so that it is on brand at every touch point. These are distinctive brand assets that become a hallmark for how people recognize and remember you or are even captivated by when they are discovering you. And these are worth it, especially if they help you stand out. But as I said at the start, this isn't a prerequisite because your personal brand is based on who you are inherently. Anything added is just a bonus based on making it easier for everyone involved. Your personal brand first and foremost only needs to be what's in it for your target audience. And these visual or even audible cues are there to enhance everything else to make it easier for people to discover you, remember you, think of you and choose you over others. Okay, so I don't wanna harp on about this stuff you know, too much. Even though I use pink like I'm a bower bird or something in how I show up for my audience because there's more to it than this superficial stuff. Because it's the stuff that will undoubtedly change over time and you likely have a certain style about you that is what people will pick up over time without you trying to force it, if you get what I mean. Okay, so we've ticked off these little boxes here of personal branding. The first here is strategy, then a message, keep it simple, clear and repetitive, your network of people and your visuals if you want to. So while you might have found that it has a lot to do with you to begin with, yes, that's correct, but it's to an extent. But it's with the purpose of being for somebody else. Otherwise, you just live out your day without drawing attention to yourself, yeah? Now the last part I wanna cover, even though I have covered a lot here, are the two things that branding I think come down to. Two little things, and they are two very easy to understand concepts. They were coined by Byron Sharp and Jenny Romanek from the Ehrenberg Bass Institute. You might have seen or read Byron's book, How Brands Grow, or Jenny's Building Distinctive Brand Assets. But these are the two concepts, mental availability and physical availability. Okay, if you're not being thought of by your target audience being mentally available to come to mind, in your target's mind, your brand won't last long and it's, it's going to be forgotten, okay? If you're not physically available, you're not showing up, you're not being seen, heard and reminded of so that you're not mentally available in your target market's mind, your brand again won't last long. So we've got to remain present, yeah? We've got to occupy a few tiny little brain cells in our audience's mind to be thought of. The question is though, what are you going to fill those little brain cells in your target market's mind? Now, I wanna give you an example of a personal brand that really hits the notes I've talked about. It pretty much hits all of them. And it's one of my favorite personal brands and it's this guy, Casey Neistat. Because he ticks a lot of the boxes of personal branding effectiveness. Whether or not he realizes it or not, along the way, he's a pretty savvy dude, so maybe. But Casey was for a good five years, YouTube's poster boy for content on the YouTube platform. And what Casey did on March 27th, 2015, was start a daily vlog, a video blog of his life, set mainly in New York City, making one video a day that lasted a good two to three years until that cadence became a little bit more sporadic, but this is physical availability playing out on YouTube. Now, Casey didn't start his vlog just to showcase uh, his life and be a self-documented personality on YouTube. A big part of why he started his vlog was to show the process of starting a technology company that ended up producing a social media app. The bonus for him was doing it in a medium that made him happy, video, and most comfortable to show up to his audience with what he was up to, and in turn, show what he was into doing in terms of what he was making, so that people could buy into it. Now, having watched Casey's vlog, a lot, I've watched it many times over the years. He showed a lot, but he didn't show everything of his life. He showed the parts of what he believed would tell an interesting story to his audience each day. And without shoving it down their throats, you know, shoving product down their throats, you'd see the progression in glimpses of the app that he was developing with his team that ended up being called Beam. But more importantly, you got the sense of the tenacity and work ethic of this guy to get what he was passionate about. You, you really understood about what he was trying to get across the line. And this plays into mental availability for why people come back 
to watch each day. And it speaks to the advantage of a personal brand over a business brand in that people are more captivated by people, especially if they are a person that the audience wants to live up to be. Now away from the camera, he might be the most average normal bloke that you would ever meet and is just like you or me, who simply has a set of interests and pursues them in a way like we all would do. But in front of the camera, there is an engaging personality that comes through in not just what he says, but how he says it, his mannerisms and the physical things that he does that draws in your attention because his, he's trying to entertain or educate or support or empathize with his audience. So you can tell that he was giving 110% of himself to dedicate it to his vlog. Now, through Casey's vlogs, he is constantly engaging with people each day. Be it those on the street that know him and want to say, hey, so you get this, hey Casey, can I be in the vlog? Or his team that he has in the technology business that he was running. But more importantly, he's showing the network of people he has that support him, that he knows, and many of his audience also know them, like the many celebrities that made it into some of his vlogs, which I think you could easily say gave Casey a tremendous amount of credibility for who he is and what he was doing to open considerable doors over his years to work with big brands, get investment for all the different business endeavors he's had over his time, do speaking engagements around the world that further fueled his content. Now, the interesting thing is that none of this required anything to do with a logo, colors, clothing to an extent. They aren't a prerequisite, but they do make that a little bit easier for you as an audience to remember someone like Casey, to recognize him and think of him when they see something that he has going on elsewhere. Casey had this going on. He had this distinctive Wayfarer Ray-Ban glasses with rims that were scuffed with spray paint. You know, he would wear them so practically, he would look like he was looking at the camera, even though he wasn't. So he was looking at either the side uh, flip out screen or where he was watching where he was going while he was vlogging, especially on a skateboard. And speaking of a skateboard, his mode of transport around New York City and places that he visited as well was on a board. It was often on a skateboard. And then there's his eclectic studio space as well. And even this general setting of downtown Manhattan where he lived and worked. But it all comes down to people, getting people to easily discover him, remember him, think of him and choose to engage with him over others because there's a lot of people on YouTube and over his career not just vlogging on YouTube I think he's done that to basically create a one-of-a-kind personal brand that a lot of people try and emulate now that was a lot of information in a very very short amount of time and you know what I've not even introduced myself yet but I'm going to come back to that at the end because I want you to have this takeaway and go and do this personal branding thing with a direction and with some confidence, okay? So this is what I want you to do. Get a piece of paper and draw a line down the center of the page and then another horizontally. So we have four quadrants on the page. Doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal, up to you. In each of those quadrants, you're going to write, who am I helping? Why am I going to help? How will I be remembered? and where and when will I show up? This bakes in everything I've talked about and distills it down into four really damn simple, but look, potentially challenging exercises. So let's start from the top and I'll do my best to uh, show you my personal brand. Now the first one, who am I helping? I'm helping businesses and branding people do better branding, that's it. Now I've got that down to a T already and I'm not expecting you to have such a simple answer right off the bat, but if you're stuck, start with those five strategy steps I talked about earlier. Number two, why am I gonna help? Better branding helps you get noticed and be thought of so that you are chosen over others. So I wanna show how it can be done, but also help you do it with you via my branding business, G'day Frank. I'm gonna point you there as a result of me giving some free value in my personal brand. Third, how will I be remembered? I'm the Aussie guy with a beard and a poncho for pink. And that is going to show you how to do better branding. If you want my help, again, I have my branding business called G'day Frank. And then lastly, the fourth one, where and when will I show up? My audience will find me as Frank on social media, YouTube, my podcast, 
and being featured on other people's channels as much as I can. But all roads will lead back to working with me in my business. Okay, so this is a really simple exercise just to get you started and get things down on paper to give you some clarity so that you know who you are here for, what you need to do to help them, how you're going to uh, be understood for who you are and what you can do for them, and then where they can find you. Four simple things, okay? Might be a bit tricky, but you will get there. So that's personal branding. It includes a bit of brand strategy, brand design, brand growth, and business of brand. The four pillars of this summit. I wanted to bake it in somehow. But just remember, it's not about you. Just like my whole presentation has been about you, it's about making it easier for the person you want to discover you, remember you, think of you, and choose you over others. It gives everyone greater confidence, not just for you, but in you, for your audience and those who want to choose you. Now, the one thing I want you to remain clear on is who it's for, because getting distracted by what others are doing is a very slippery slope to making your brand complicated to buy into. This means if you are focused on attracting clients for your personal brand, don't start making pen tool tutorials for designers because you saw someone else on Instagram doing it in the hope of getting more followers like they do, because that isn't the audience that you are looking for. And as a side note, if you do focus on directing your attention to clients and you make content aimed at them, you're still going to attract others like you through osmosis. And that's why 90% of those who follow me are fellow branding people, even though I focus mainly on attracting clients to my business. All right, that's enough about you. <laughs> my name is Reagan Frank McCreel. You can just call me Frank because again, it's easier to remember and think of me. Just the same as it is to pronounce and spell rather than Reagan is. Now, there is one part of this talk I deliberately left out of this session and that's naming whether to not to make your personal brand based on your name or your business name, especially if you're just starting out in your business. I've covered that in a recent episode that I'd like you to check out. There's a bit of a supplementary to this talk um, at my Dr. Branding uh, podcast that you can find at g'dayfrank.com forward slash candy or searching for Dr. Branding on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Now, thank you for attending this session. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Now go out and do better branding. What do we think? Good? Yeah? Give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. See you next week with a proper vlog. Bye. Do better branding.